Well, fall is here and I really enjoy those crisp fall mornings. And that means it's time to get your rig ready for winter camping. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back to the Happy Place Diaries. If this is your first time with us, we welcome you to our channel. Uh, we are the channel that uh, helps you get the very most out of your RV experience. We do that through tips and tricks and reviews and things like today where we're going to do a how-to on how to get your rig, whether it's a travel trailer, a fifth wheel, or a Class A ready for winter camping. Yeah, that's right. I said winter camping. It's not time to put away the trailer. It's time to get out there because I don't know about you guys, but we love camping in the winter. You know, the campgrounds are a lot less crowded. You get those nice cool mornings and the cool cool evenings it's just a great time to find that cozy retreat away from the hustle and bustle of everything that's going on you're going to want to stay all the way to the end because we do have a bonus tip for you at the very end so uh, stick around and let's get into it so since we're already outside let's talk about uh, insulation and you, you know that uh, even though this is a four season uh, build on this Keystone Passport, there is always room for improvement when it comes to insulating uh, your rig. So this is the pass-through uh, compartment of our trailer. It's up front and directly above from this pass-through is our closets and our bed. And so what we've noticed, in, especially in, in the winter, uh, that, that you do get a little bit of cold air in here. And so what we've done is gone ahead and winterized this a little bit. Let me get some stuff out of the way. And we put that Reflectix in. And I think we might do it on the top uh, at a later date. And we also put carpeting in. And this carpeting goes all the way from uh, side to side. That basically just gives us another layer of insulation. And what we've noticed is... Uh, it, it does make a big difference, especially this insulation that we put up against the wall here uh, because we were always getting a draft through our cabinets in there. You know, they do a pretty good job insulating and it depends on the thickness of your, of your doors and stuff and these are insulated doors. But drop some insulation in that area and I'll show you where else we put some insulation. So in these cabinets here that are above in the living space, we also put that Reflectix in back here. And what we noticed was uh, it, it, it really uh, kept things from freezing in there, but it also uh, added to a little bit of the insulation value of the RV. And that strip goes all, all along the end there. The other place that we've added some Reflectix is in the bathroom under the sink where our PEX pipes are. Uh, these pipes are the closest to the outside. The pipes that are uh, in the galley are kind of interior for the trailer, but these are exposed to a certain degree and the outdoor shower is right behind that. So this kind of adds as a blanket for the outdoor shower. So it's a really good idea to just add a little bit more insulation wherever you think is necessary, but definitely uh, check your pipes, uh, check your cavities, any place that's going to, uh, you know, uh, have cold air uh, introduced to it, especially up front here on your trailer, because most storage compartments are in the front and they're really not that insulated uh, very well. So anyway, check, check the insulation. The other thing that we're going to look at while we're out here is your propane. So you're going to rely on propane a lot in the winter time for heat, for cooking, and, and all of that. So you're going to want to make sure that you're keeping your propane tanks topped off and, you know, make sure that you check your hoses, you know, for cracks and leaks and stuff like that. Now's a really good time to check that. So to help us maintain, you know, good levels and make sure that we know uh, how much propane we have uh, We use the gas stop and I'll put a link up on that and this will tell you How much propane we have Let me turn that on Open that up 
All right, our needle is on high, so our propane is full. The other thing while you're checking your propane is make sure that you check your battery, especially if you uh, have a battery that, that needs maintenance. Uh, now is a really good time to pull that annual maintenance on your battery. Check the, the fluid levels and whatnot. So check your battery because uh, you might need it also. Okay, so the back side of the propane is this little device right here that's that's on your wall and whether it's a analog one or a semi-digital one or whatever it is, uh, this right here is your thermostat and it controls your heater and you're going to want to make sure that it is functioning and you will, it's a really good idea to go ahead and run that furnace before you head out to make sure that you don't have any issues with it. It's also a good time to kind of blow out uh, the nasty stuff that might be uh, settling down in your ductwork uh, over the summer, you know, dust and whatnot. That's the last thing that you want to arrive in camp. Get your furnace fired up and all of a sudden you got, you know, uh, a trailer full of dust. So, you know, do it now while you can open up the windows and maybe vacuum things out uh, later. So we're going to go ahead and run that furnace. Okay, here's a tip for you. Uh, when you turn on your propane tank for the first time when you get into camp, um, or any time that you turn your propane on for the first time, uh, you need to bleed the lines. You need to get gas flowing. The best way to do that is to light up your cooktop or your, your, your stovetop, your range. Boom. We got gas. If you see the flame, then you got gas pushing through your system. So here's a true story. We got into camp one night and it was chilly. Uh, we hadn't cooked anything. We pushed the slide out out. Figured we'd we'd worry about everything else in the morning. Well, we fired up the furnace and it wasn't working. Uh, we 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 could hear it. It was wanting to fire up, but we had not uh, bled the lines and got gas pushing through. And so it took a little bit for the furnace to fire up. So let's go fire up that furnace. It's a really good idea for you to know where your furnace is. It's not the thermostat. Our furnace is right behind door number three here. This is the refrigerator door and this is our furnace. And there's four little screws right on the side of each side that you could pop this panel off and you can have access to your furnace. So if you need to do any maintenance, uh, blow anything out, uh, that's a great uh, thing to know so that you're not hunting around for it. The other part is that's where the cool noise is going to come from. You know that noise that you want to hear on that chilly morning? Okay, the fan is blowing. You can hear that noise. And I've got hot air coming out of the register. So my furnace is working. And as promised, it's blowing uh, dust in my face right now. I'll show you what else we did with our, with our registers. On our registers, and I gotta vacuum this out, but our registers, we put filters in, and that way a whole lot of grime doesn't get down inside there. You can see where it's collecting. I'm gonna get the shop back out and clean that up. But that is a wonderful sound on a nice cold morning. So another tip is, go ahead and close your vents at night. You know, heat rises. Uh, so go ahead and close these vents down at night. Like to leave them, we like to leave them a little bit cracked uh, just for moisture control. We'll talk about moisture control in just a sec, but I uh, check your vents. There's also insulators that you could put up here in the vent holes, and they're like uh, thick pillows, they fit perfectly inside this frame. Uh, that's another good way of adding some insulation to your trailer. For moisture control, we use essentially two methods. Uh, we like to keep things venting, uh, so we might crack a window, keep one of the vents open, but we also use these damp rid buckets. Uh, we keep one of these underneath the bed, and we put one out here in the living space. I tell you what, you put one of these under the bed, and you're never going to have a, a condensation problem in your room. At least we haven't experienced any condensation. Not only that, but it's got a really nice fresh scent. So that doesn't hurt. So we use damp rid and then we, you know, crack a window, uh, keep a vent open or whatever so that we can have some circulation 
uh, going on in here. Uh, a little bit of moisture control goes a long way. Okay, since we're not winterizing our trailer, we're just getting it ready for winter camping, uh, we definitely want to keep our holding tanks uh, from freezing. So the pink stuff, uh, we like to go ahead and put about a cup or two of antifreeze, the RV antifreeze, the pink stuff, not the green stuff. Uh, put the pink stuff down into your holding tank. So both of our gray tanks and then put a little bit down in the toilet. And while you're at the campground, if it you know starts dropping below freezing, you're not going to have to worry about your tanks freezing uh, down there. Now our RV is insulated underneath and has a under uh, cover. So that helps uh, you know keep the pipes from freezing. It helps keep the the tanks from freezing, um, but this is just a little bit more insurance uh, to keep them from freezing. You don't want to go out there to dump your tanks and you're getting a slushy uh, come out. So, so the next thing that we do to kind of make uh, winter camping more comfortable is by throwing down some extra rugs. Uh, we've got the hardwood floor and we only have rugs underneath the dinette, underneath the chairs area, the sitting area. Uh, we keep rugs by the doors here, uh, the front back door and the back door. And that's primarily to keep us from tracking, you know, dirt and stuff into the trailer. But it also adds to the insulation value of the floor. Now, again, our ducting is underneath the floor. So that does warm up the floor a little bit. I mean, enough to where it's not uncomfortable. Uh, throw a couple extra rugs down. And I'll show you where we've put rugs that really make a difference. So first of all, the rugs that we have in front of our doors. You see that one and that one there. And the nice thing about that is if we do need to move them into like this space here or this space back here, we can always just pick those up and move them. But here is where it's really important. Right there. We went and got these rugs. They're two foot uh, by five feet. Just little area rugs. And we put those in so that on those chilly mornings and you step out of bed, you're not stepping on a cold floor. And again, this part of the floor is right by the uh, storage compartment. So with the Reflectix that is right behind that wall right there, in the rug, it really adds uh, more insulation. So, okay, those are some great tips to uh, get you started on some winter camping. And as promised, I've got one more tip coming up and it's a great one. It's probably our favorite winter camping tip. Uh, but first I wanted to thank everybody for coming and spending a little bit of time with us. I want to thank you if this is your first time with us and you found value in this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up and then hit that subscribe button. Also click that little bell next to it and that's gonna let you know every time we put out another video. Hey, but if you really wanna help out our channel, and I hope that you do, uh, go ahead and share the video with a friend. Hopefully there was something in this video that's gonna help you get the most out of your RV and get it out there winter camping. Okay, that last tip, is this right here, our little space heater. This is a Honeywell space heater. It is the greatest winter camping tool. Uh, it saves us on propane. Uh, it heats up the entire uh, trailer. It's nice and quiet. And when you're plugged in at a campsite, it's not costing you anything to run this bad boy. And it does put out some nice heat. So invest in a little space heater like this. I think we picked this thing up at, at Walmart. Wasn't very expensive, probably about 30 bucks at the most. Uh, but we've had this thing for a while. It sits right there. It never leaves right there until summer. And um, we just love it. Burns off the chill in the morning, but it is a great tool uh, for getting the most out of winter camping in your RV. All right, well, from Teresa and I here at the Happy Place Diaries, we thank you for coming along with us. 
and uh, get out there and do some winter camping. And we'll see you in the next video.